Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us for a very special Sip and Sail Cocktail Hour as together we celebrate food and wine along three of Europe's beautiful rivers. It is my pleasure to introduce to you our host, the co-founder and executive vice president of AMA Waterways, Christine Karst. Joining Christine today is chef Joanne Weir. Joanne is the author of 19 cookbooks, co-owner of Copita Restaurant in Sao Salito, and host of her own PBS travel and cooking series, Plates and Places. AMA Waterways have been proud sponsors of Joanne's series for the past three years, and we have welcomed Joanne along with her film crew and followers on the river cruises on the Danube, the Rhine, and in Bordeaux. Bon voyage and enjoy this evening's sip and sail. But before we get started on our cruise, I thought for the ones who joined us today as our new guests, I would quickly tell you what a sip and sail cocktail hour is on board an AMA Waterways ship. So the sip and sail cocktail takes place every day before dinner in our lovely main lounges. And it provides a wonderful opportunity for our guests to get together, sip a favorite drink from our complimentary cocktail menu, and exchange stories from their busy day on shore, no matter if you were on a city tour, if you went biking or hiking, or maybe tasted some of the culinary delights of the region. So to start our virtual sip and sail cocktail hour now, I hope you have your favorite beverage on hand to sip along with Joanne and I. And for today's journey on the Danube, I am going to enjoy my favorite wine, the Grüner Veltliner. That's an Austrian grape. But Joanne, I know you have a favorite cocktail that you created, especially when you joined us on board our Amma Magna on the Danube. Can you tell us a little bit about this? Yes, definitely. It's right here. And um, I created a cocktail called the Danube 75, and it was in honor of my cruise on the Danube. It's kind of a spin-off of the French 75 cocktail, but I substituted two apricot, two different kinds of apricot liquor and um, juice. And um, because what I wanted was to celebrate the wonderful apricots that come from the Wakao Valley. And um, also I will be celebrating a little bit later when I show you how to make an apricot tart. Um, so anyway, here, this is mine. <laughs> so she is absolutely. So um, I would like to propose a toast to friends, family, food, and fantastic destination. May they all come together to create river cruise memories that last a lifetime. Cheers and some more. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Mm. So <laughs> good, so good. <laughs> good. So, so Joanne, and by the way, I know we have late June now, this is the apricot season and I'm missing so much to be on board our ships in the Danube area, to have fresh apricots from the region every, every day. But now, Joanne, for your PBS show, places, uh, Plates and Places, you get to travel and cook with many different chefs around the world, including the chefs on board our ships. I think your travel partners and guests will enjoy getting a peek into some of your recent trips with this short video. I love to travel the globe in search of new food and wine discoveries. I really get my inspiration is in my travels. I love to bring those recipes home from the places that I visit and I love to cook the dishes that I've had other places. From Greece to Spain to Budapest to San Francisco, come with me and cook amazing dishes.
Are you hungry yet? If you love to shop for the freshest food with the widest selection, when in Budapest, head straight for this central market built in 1897. And I'm here today to look for inspiration for creating a Hungarian-inspired menu. I love it when an ingredient can take you right back to a place, a culture, and a cuisine, just by reaching into your pantry and taking out a jar. So are you ready to play a little game with me on tastes and ingredients, just to see what memories come back of the little towns and villages you visited? while sailing with us on the Rhine and the Danube? Yeah, I'd love to do that. I would love it. <laughs> Great, Joanne. So, okay, let's start on the Rhine with an easy one. Okay. I mentioned a word and you talk about your memories. So, okay. Asbach brandy. Well, first of all, I love the way you say it, Asbach. You sound so good, but Rudestein. <laughs> I love yeah, German. <laughs> <laughs> I love Rudestein. It's a beautiful little town, but also it's the coffee that comes from there. And what they do is they flame that brandy, and then it's that big dollop of rich French cream that they put on the top. It's so delicious. Um, but I also loved the gondola, the cable car that goes up to the top of the mountain. And then you look down and you can see the Rhine River and those beautiful vineyards. And you can, be, I love the Riesling vineyards and I love Riesling wine. But, um, and then we go back to the ship. What I loved was it's kind of, you come full circle because you go back to the ship and you have the same Rudersheim coffee. It's such a treat. I know, I'm missing my Rudersheimer coffee too. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but you talked about the Riesling wines. So here we have Germany, but the Riesling is also famous somewhere else. And there comes the culinary delight, Riesling and tart flambe. Wow, you're talking about two things that I absolutely love and they pair so well together, but that's Rudesheim. Rudesheim is the most beautiful little fairy tale like village. And I love walking on that main street and uh, eating those pretzels with the salt on the top. They're out of this world. And then the macaroons, which are also so delicious. Um, I loved it, but tart flambe, I think it really, that tart flambe gives pizza a little run for its money because seriously, it is onions and let's see, creme fraiche and bacon. It doesn't get better than that. That is the most beautiful, beautiful tart. I know, and that was, I know everything starts with an R here, right? <laughs> but we went now into France to the Alsatian wine road, Ricavier. And uh, it is part, of course, of our Rhine wine crew. So that was country number two. We had Germany, we had France. Well, now it's an easy one. Sauerkraut. Well, you're talking to someone who grew up eating sauerkraut. I mean, I love <laughs> sauerkraut, but that's Strasbourg. And, and what I love is the restaurant, Maison de Tenor. It's so wonderful. It's like stepping back in time. It's, I think it's one of the oldest restaurants in Europe and they make the best chacrut, and I was so lucky, chacrut is the you know, sauerkraut with sausages, but I was so lucky to be in the kitchen making it with them, and then sitting down at one of those beautiful tables, looking out the windows. It's just a really beautiful, beautiful um, city. I loved it. I know. Okay. And I loved, Christine, I loved going back on the ship, and for lunch, we had the chacrut, and it was so phenomenal. It was the most delicious lunch. I'll never forget that. My mom, I mean, her recipe, I still cook today, the sauerkraut was so unique. And what's so special about this, it is actually like a tra traditional dish in so many European countries between France, Germany, but also Austria. I know Rudy, I wish he <laughs> would be here right now. <laughs> he could share his recipe with you about Austria in, about sauerkraut in Austria. 
Uh, but that brings us actually a little bit now away from the Rhine. And in German, I would say paprika, but in a different country, they are really, really firing it up with paprikash. Oh, I love Budapest. Now you're talking, that is the most beautiful city. And I, what I really, there's lots of restaurants and bars and it's just the most interesting city. But what I really loved was going to the central market and searching for the best paprika. And we found it, which was so fun. And then you can go up to the second floor and you can have a few bites to eat. And that's the most phenomenal food. I mean, Budapest is the place to eat. But the other thing that I loved about it, and I will never forget this evening on Alma Magna, we were on the upper deck and it was nighttime. And on what we're, you know, docked right on the river. And on one side, you see Buddha. And on the other side, Pesht, with all of those glimmering lights. It was the most romantic evening for me. I'm serious. I have goosebumps just saying that too. I'm telling you, I loved it. I loved it. I you know. Such amazing things with people. Um, it's really wonderful. And I, I also, when we do this, really passing by uh, the parliament in Budapest, uh, when it's illuminated so beautifully, uh, our dining room uh, crew, um, our bartenders, they come around with this, with another actually Hungarian delight. Um, it's like a plum schnapps, barak palinka, we call it. Right. And I know it always warms the heart of everyone right. who is on board with us, right? So I, okay. okay, so now let's see a little bit in this area, but not quite. What does the word salt mean to you? Salzburg. Salzburg. I was really surprised. Going to Salzburg was amazing because everybody thinks about, um, you know, the sound of music and Mozart, but there's more there. And I didn't even know that uh, underground, there are these huge salt caverns where salt is produced. And that was really incredible to me. What we did was we bought some of the salt, brought it back to the ship, and we made this salt encrusted whole fish. It was so delicious. It was really fun. I love, and I thought, I think also that Salzburg is one of the most gorgeous cities. It's elegant and really beautiful. Yes, yes, absolutely it is. And salt is so precious all the time, right? And it I is. love the picture here. You know, in Salzburg, I think it's one of the lakes in the Lake District there. Right. And for you, our guests, I know you have the hardest choice when you are with us in this part in Austria, because we offer you three included show excursions at the same time. Salzburg in Austria, Chesky Krumlov in the Czech Republic, or of course the Austrian Lake District. Tough choice, but maybe another reason to come back for many, many more times. But now we go to the sweet treats and we all love chocolate. I think I have every night, not just as our bed hopeful, but I have every night, I have to admit it, a piece of chocolate and I love the dark chocolate so much. Tell us about. You know, that's so funny you should say that. I mean, those are the words out of my mouth. That must be why we get along so well. I <laughs> love chocolate. I am such a huge fan of chocolate. I really do. But what I think about, I mean, when we were there, we made a beeline for hotel soccer to, I wanted to taste the soccer tort. And then we also put that, and I know you're supposed to say soccer, right? Soccer? How do you say it? Soccer. 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 So um, we tasted the tart, which was wonderful. But then we went to this wonderful little pastry shop owned by a Viennese pastry chef, Viola. Beautiful young woman who is making the best soccer tort. Um, soccer tort. And she puts, the, her secret is that she puts two layers of this really rich, delicious apricot puree in between. It's the most delicious cake and I made it with her. It was so much fun. I loved it. I love mm. And speaking about apricots and seeing them here, what comes to mind with apricots? Okay, so apricots. And before I was, I know that I forgot, did I say it was Vienna? Of course I should have said that. But anyway, um, the, I would definitely say a town that I still remember walking in those beautiful little streets. And I'm going to say this wrong, but is it Dernstein? 
Dönstein. Dönstein. Dönstein is every, every local, whenever you say Dönstein, will love you forever. So. Oh, okay. okay. So that's Austria. I loved that little village, but that is all about apricots, which is really kind of what inspired today, I think. But these are some of the best apricots that are grown in the world. And an apricot fan like myself, and I know that you love them too. Um, they're just the ones that are so sweet and so plump. And then it's the town that's so beautiful, like absolutely mm -hmm. beautiful. Oh yeah, and of course we have apricot tastings there. As yeah. you say, we taste the apricot liqueur. Uh, we have these special um, e afternoon and evening events on the Sunday when the weather is beautiful, you know, where we have the ice cream with apricots and we call it Bole in German. That's a mix of a spritzer with some white wine and fresh apricots in there. Oh, um, it is just so, so delicious. That sounds so good. <laughs> so Joanne, that was fun. Um, so these photos show a few more of my favorite memories from yeah. my river cruises in Europe. And if our audience would like to share a food related river cruise memory, in the comment section. We will pick one at the end of our sip and sail event and award someone at, with a little price. So what about this? Hmm? So so yeah, okay. Um, now, Joanne, um, you are going to show us how to capture a taste of Austria with your quick and easy apricot tart. And that's now my favorite moment coming. So <laughs> let's turn the screen over to you. Okay, thank you so much, Christine. I'm gonna grab the puff pastry out of the refrigerator. So I have this puff pastry all rolled out. And what I did was, I bought a piece, I bought the puff pastry. You can make your own, but really they make great puff pastry. The only thing I say to people is when you are um, buying puff pastry, make sure it's made with 100% butter. Um, sometimes they're made with like Crisco or you know different kinds of shortening. I really like it with just butter because it's just richer and more delicious. So what I did was I rolled it out and then I folded the sides in. But the other thing you could do is you can roll it in, into a square and cut it into a circle. And then I brought the edges in like this. You could do either way. I just thought this would be kind of fun. And then I made this, which I love. This is frangipan. So this is a mixture and it's, uh, this is almond flour and almond flour mixed with a little bit. Let me put some on here. It'll be a little easier for me. So it's almond flour that's um, also a little bit of butter. Um, there's some, uh, let me think, I'm trying, regular flour, an egg yolk, a little bit of almond extract. It's always a challenge to kind of spread this out. This knife helps a lot in terms of spreading this. Um, let me think what else. I think I've got everything that's in it. Uh, yeah, almonds, flour. It's very easy to make. I just put all the, oh, and it, I said an egg yolk. I put all of the ingredients into a bowl and then all you have to do is just to mix it with a wooden spoon or a spatula, a rubber spatula, either one. So, and what you want is you want your pastry to be cold, but you also want this to be room temperature because otherwise it's difficult to spread. I say that it's actually giving me a little issue, but of course, and I wanna make that kind of even, whoops. We get the rest of this. This is so wonderful. It's that almond extract with the almonds that tastes so delicious. You know, my daughter's birthday is coming up in two days. I think I will make this apricot tart, you know, with your recipe for sure. It's so good. And really people love this. You know, what's great about it is you get the sweetness of the apricots. You get the wonderful texture of the this frangipan and also the nice almond flavor. And you've got the crunch of the puff pastry and that richness, which is so good. Okay, now I'm trying to get it down to the other end. Come on, oh, there we go. I'm coaxing it down there. <laughs> All right, I'm almost done. And this, 
offset spatula, just using a small one is great. There. So now I cut the apricots. And by the way, I bought my apricots at the farmer's market. And these are called Blenheim. And they're really, I think that they probably come close to the apricots in the Wachau Valley, but maybe not quite as good. I don't know. No, I think the apricots in the Wachau Valley are so special, so, so sweet, so juicy, huh? Mm. Oh, you know, but what's so fun is to walk in that beautiful town and buy everything that all, everything has to do with apricots. I mean, I, I've never seen so many apricot products. Mm -hmm. And it's a fun place to take something home as a oh, souvenir. Yeah. So what I'm doing is just to put these apricots. I cut these, what I did was I cut them in half and I removed the pits and then I just cut them into each one into six pieces. Sometimes I cut them into eight depending upon the size of the apricots. And by the way, you're gonna love this. I save the pits to the apricots. This is kind of a fun thing to do. I make an ice cream called Noyo ice cream with the pits because what you do is you crack those and there's a little seed on the inside. And it's something that they do in France. And you take the seed and you steep it in the milk and the cream and you make an ice cream. And it is so delicious. It's got the strongest almond flavor and it's out of this world. It's really delicious. So I need to make you that and I know you love ice cream, so. Oh, 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 completely. Uh, whenever I'm on board our ships, <laughs> I should not reveal this, but the crew knows me. <laughs> they don't even have to take my dessert order in the evening. You know, it's all these different types of ice creams with the different fruits. But again, Aprico is my favorite, favorite one. And that's quite an insider tip to really reuse um, this oh. part. The apricot, right? Yeah. Mm. Isn't that funny? I mean, it's just such a wonderful thing and you would never think you would get so much flavor out of it. I have to tell you one of my favorite things on the ship, and I know this is crazy to even bring it up, but I love those fried potatoes. I get those every single dinner. I'm <laughs> serious, Christine. The food on the ship is so delicious. It's really extraordinary. And the wine selections are really amazing. I feel just so lucky every time I'm on board, not to mention the service. It's just a really incredible experience. Okay. But you know, Joanne, our crew also lives from our guest chefs coming on board. And I know how much they love to have you because even so they have their wonderful recipes and they truly are amazing chefs. But you are enrichment and everyone who is coming on board as a chef because we all can learn new things, right? Okay. And develop things. That's so true. Um, but what I'm doing now is just to brush just a little bit of butter onto the top of the apricots. And you could um, sprinkle this with a little bit of sugar if you wanted to, but I don't think it really needs it because the apricots are so sweet. Mm -hmm. So now the magic of television. I happen to have one made. <laughs> so how beautiful it looks at the end. So it looks so good. And um, what I love, I just took this out and what I'm gonna do is, let me move this. So now your husband has to eat two cakes. He's gonna have to eat two tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so this is just a little bit more. Let me move this onto my, and I'll cut a piece. You can brush this also with a little bit of butter after it comes out. Or the other thing that you can do, which is kind of nice, is to just brush it with a little bit of melted apple jelly. That's also great. And by the way, the recipes are going to be on the AMA website. And I think it's the next week they'll be on there so everybody can have the recipe. But this is easy. I mean, seriously, to make that frangipan just takes a few minutes. So, and you know, I am gonna put just a little butter because I like the sheen that, it makes on the top of those apricots. Mm. I cut a piece right from the center. Mm -mm. And you want to hear that crunch. Listen. Yes. <laughs> and let's see. I'm going to move this to the side while I plate this. 
Oh, it smells so good. And now I have another treat. This I'm very excited about. It's a recipe that I just wrote in honor of Ama, and it's an apricot ice cream. <gasps> I'm telling you, I think it is so delicious. So for anybody that makes ice cream, you're gonna have the recipe also. That will also be on the Ama website. Just one second, I'm gonna grab it in the freezer. Perfect. I seriously could eat this whole thing. It's just, um, it's the essence of apricots. And what I did was I made an apricot puree. I took two pounds of apricots and stewed them with just a little bit of sugar. Not even, I think it was a quarter of a cup. And then I pureed that and I added it to equal amounts of ice cream base. So that was milk cream and egg yolks and a touch more sugar. And I ended up with this, look how the color of that is just beautiful. So I'm sorry you weren't here. Yeah. It sounds, it almost sounds healthy, right? <laughs> <laughs> I know, because it's got a lot of fruit in it. It's true. It's definitely firm. I knew it would be. But I insist on getting a nice big scoop of that ice cream to put. Mm. Do you want it on the side or on the top? I like it on the top. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like when the ice cream is melting over the apricots and um, can you see oh that? My. Oh, Joanne. So oh. I will, I will in my whole imagination, will eat this. The good thing, what I don't have to do doing it this way, I don't have to do my exercise in the morning, but I still want to do it. My morning <laughs> stretching and core and a little bit of yoga, right? It's all part of our culinary wellness journey. Right. Exactly. Well, that's the nice thing about Alma too, is because you have the really wonderful wellness centers now and all the exercise classes. It's great. It's yeah. really. Yeah, no, nobody has to feel guilty after eating a beautiful, beautiful ice cream. Uh, how should I really, I don't even want to call it a cake. So it's a pastry, right? It's, right. it's really kind of like an apricot tart. Yeah. Tart. Right, so that's the tart. It's an apricot and frangipan puff pastry tart. Mm. So it's also interesting tart. In Germany, they actually call it, call it torte. So that's the German okay. version. So there you see how the languages are all a little bit related to each other, right? Yeah. yeah. Wow. So um, talking about, you know, fantastic cuisine, culinary delights, and you, Joanne, um, and talking about Ama Magna, because you have been there with us. I think you must have known that one of my favorite moments on board our ships is when we do our ice cream party on the sun deck. Okay. And I mentioned a little bit the apricot bowl before, remember the spritzer, the wine and the champagne and the apricots in there. But at the same time, these ice cream parties, you cannot beat it. And imagine we are cruising through the Wachau Valley and uh, on the sides, and that's now in spring. That's not when the apricots are in, in, in season, but in spring, the apricot trees are in blossom. And there is nothing more beautiful than when you see them in their white rosé or dark rosé colors. And that's also so typical and traditional for the Wachau Valley. And the ones of you who like to bike and be a little bit more active, that's when we also take you through the vineyards uh, on a bike excursion. You know, you are passing these beautiful apricot trees. There are also apple trees. There are cherry trees. And with a little bit of sunshine, it's another wonderful, wonderful experience. So um, yeah, this, the sun deck, of course, you see, is quite spacious, but now Ama Magna is also very special because we have four restaurants on board these ships. So we physically bring a luxury ocean ship now to the river. And in those times we are here right now, where the luxury of space is so important that we can really keep the social distance wherever we are on board, in the lounge, in the library, 
the different restaurants. So we have absolutely no challenge to accommodate all our guests there in those different restaurants. And by the way, at the current time, the protocol is anyway, once we can start receiving guests from North America to limit the number of guests on board a ship to 100. So imagine when you come again, how much space, how much luxury you have. And also the quality of and freshness of food is so important on all our ships. Um, it is really, we, we get the produce from the villages, especially the fruits and the vegetable. And one of my favorite restaurants is actually our, our fresco. This is on the right side down there, where normally we serve our breakfast and lunch, but in the evening, we convert this special place into a fine dine venue. And it is so beautiful for me because it has the most gorgeous view to the river. So the front view to the river and the surrounding scenery. Um, but I know, Joanne, you loved cooking in the chef's table restaurant on Ama Magna, as it is so spacious with a lovely open show kitchen where our chefs prepare our multi-course tasting menu right in front of our guests. And I think we want to do a little poll now. So this goes now to you, our guests. How do you immerse yourself into the local culinary experience when you travel? So is it visiting the local markets? to taste, or is it to research and book a special restaurant in advance? Because you might have heard about this or read about this special restaurant in social media. Is it that you ask your cruise manager or your guide for his or her recommendation for a special restaurant? Or do you bring home uh, the ingredients and recipes um, that you found uh, during your trips? Or is it even all of the above? And we give you now a little bit of time. And then of course, uh, from here, People go into some questions and answers. Okay, so we have the results in. So very interesting. Of course, we should know it is all of the above for 69% of our audience. It truly is an immersion into the local markets, the special restaurants, um, the guidance of the cruise manager or your local guide because they are locals. They know exactly where to find the best spots. And of course, it's about the memories when you bring home your ingredients and your recipes. And once you cook them everything at home and share it with your loved ones, that is so nice because sharing makes other people happy and we all want to share our happiness with each other, right? And of course, we talked about indulging in our culinary delights uh, and wellness. And I'm also very, very proud to say that the Ama Magna has not just an oversized wellness studio and um, several massage salons, a hairdresser and manicure and pedicure, but we also have spinning bikes with a view. And I think again, in those times, there is so much about being outside and to breathe the fresh air, of course, in the right distance. This is what many, many of our guests really will want to enjoy. And again, then Joanne's delicious food and our chef's uh, amazing food must not be a guilty pleasure. So let's see, um, we can go from our wellness area where we also have a fresh juice bar. We have our detox waters there with so many wonderful ingredients like the lemon and the lime, the oranges, the mint, the cucumber. All of these ingredients 
are actually there to clean your body and to prepare your body for the next culinary adventure that you will experience on board. So let's go to the next slide. And uh, I'm also very proud to let you all know that we have the most spacious staterooms, all this balcony on board the Ama Magna, the smallest one, and that's just a really small number of guest rooms on the lowest deck, starting with 205 square feet. But the majority of our staterooms, about 80%, our suites, category S, A, and S, B, with 355 square feet. And then we have our grand suites and one owner suite, six grand suites, one owner suite with 474 square feet, and the owner suite with 710 square feet. Um, so think about this when you hopefully either move your cruise that was suspended into the future to board the Ama Magna, or maybe you have never booked with us and want to come in the future, that is definitely the ship to go right now. So now let's go into um, our questions and let me just see. Um, okay, question number one. Somebody was asking what Grunewald Liener what type of Grunewald Lina I'm drinking. Now, I'm very blessed that I have the Sandgrube today. The Sandgrube is a Grunewald Lina from the Wachau region from Austria. And we actually serve this wine on board when we are cruising the Danube, sometimes for our welcome dinner, sometimes in our chef's table restaurant, because it's a very fine wine um, that is accompanying the different tasting menus that we are serving there. So that was question number one. So let me go to the next one. Question number two, how long does it take to cook apricot tart in the oven? I think, Joanne, this goes to you. And will you send us a picture too with the recipe? Of course, we will send them all in details with our thank you message. But Joanne, back to you. So how long will it, will it need to be in the oven? Thank you so much for reminding me because I forgot to say that 375 degrees for about 40 minutes. But I really look to see that it's nice and golden and I wanna make sure it's crispy on the bottom. So I would say about 40 minutes is good. 40 minutes. And yeah. again, I need to know this too because remember I have to start baking. <laughs> Tomorrow or on Saturday morning, and I want to say thank you to all of you in our audience for your wonderful birthday greetings and wishes for my daughter. She's turning 27 now, and she's getting married. If we can, if we can do the celebration when when it's coming. So, but we are all still very very positive. So, and if not, then we will all have your apricot heart, right? <laughs> So um, question number four, um, actually in reality it's number three. Are there any videos I can watch about the experience with Ama Waterways and share them with my family? What are the dining uh, and tours are like? Yes, of course. I mean, we do have videos. Um, we have two ways. You can either sus subscribe to our YouTube channel that's the easiest way to search videos from Ama Waterways. Um, and one of my favorite videos for first time guests is called Why Ama Waterways? Or your option number two, you can also go on the video section on our website, www.amawaterways.com. And um, then, of course, you can click on these videos. We have plenty of videos there, and you can watch them and share them with your family as well. And now it's also time for me. Oh, we just got another question before I announce the winner. Um, the next question was, what itinerary do you recommend to visit the most vineyards? Well, that's a good one. Um, and first, I want to say we have now about 70 wine experience cruise, cruises. 
throughout the year. We start with this in March. We have some in summer and some actually also in a time that I love so much. And this is the fall season in early mid-November because the fall colors are coming. And imagine all these vineyards turning into those bright yellow, orange, and red colors. So um, there are definitely the vineyards in the Danube um, that we introduced today uh, to you with the Wachau Valley. There are the vineyards in, uh, on the Rhine River. And while the Danube features both the white and the red wine, and today, of course, I'm drinking the Grüner Weltliner, the white wine. But my favorite red wine from the Danube is called Blau Frankischer. So that's another, another great wine. Now on the Rhine, many beautiful vineyards, and that's the same for the Moselle. Um, it's mostly about the white wines. They have fantastic um, dry Rieslings, not as sweet as we can buy them here in the United States, but high class Rieslings. But they also have Silvana and many other grapes there. But then we also talk about France, yeah, when we come to the Rhone area. In the Rhone area where we are cruising, we are touching four wine regions. And this is Chateauneuf de Pape, close okay. to Avignon. And I know, Joanne, you love this region. Uh -huh. Maybe we should do another sip and sail with you, featuring really the Rhone River there. Yeah. Um, so Chateauneuf de Pape, Côte de Rhone, we have the Beaujolais region, and the Burgundy region. And because this itinerary is also so much in demand, this, um, this special area of France, we are moving now the Ama Christina over the winter season to the Rhone. And then we will have two ships there sailing the Amacello and the Ama Christina. And then there is Portugal. Portugal with the Douro Valley. The Douro Valley, the Golden Valley, one of the oldest wine growing areas in Europe. And I cannot forget Bordeaux, because Bordeaux also has some of the very, very best French wines or wines in the world. So um, the best is, like in your poll, do them all, okay? One year after the next. Okay. So let's see if, okay, there are more questions. What is the best time of the year to sail, to sail when apricots are in season? Apricots are in season now from the middle to the end of June until the middle or the end of July. And this depends on the summer season, if it's coming early or if it's coming late, has to do with the winter season. It's similar to the tulip. Many are asking, when are the tulips out? And if we have a very short winter, tulips are out in late March. If we have a very cold winter, then they come out much later in April. And the apricots, when they ripe, it depends on the, the number of sunny days and the number of um, dry days and, and not so many rainy days. But again, if you want to be sure, early July, I would say that's the best bet. So uh, Joanne, one for you. What is your favorite dish on board our ships? That's a tough one, huh? Oh, well, no, I have to say the one thing that I tasted that I love, well, there's so many, but I really love the chicken paprikash and I love the chacrute. The chacrute was so delicious. I think I went up and got three helpings of it because it was so good. It's amazing. Yeah. I love everything though. The food is delicious. It is, it is. And I know that so many guests always want to travel with you and so many of our travel advisors also have asked us, and this question came up just now, when will you sail again with us? And when, when and where? And I think we have looked into something already, right? Yes, we definitely, we're looking at dates right now and definitely for next year. And I'm pretty sure that I want to do the, believe it or I want to go on the Danube again. We filmed on the Danube, but I was working so much that I didn't really feel like I got to see it. I just got little glimpses, but I loved the Danube. But honestly, I've been on three. I loved all three so much. Um, I just want to do every single one now. I really do. And you know, I have an idea for you, Joanne. Um, and I think many of our guests will be very interested in this. Um, 
with all those flights, you know, the flights, the, the way how, how it looks like, they might not be the same pleasure anymore as they used to be with so many restrictions. Maybe people are flying less, but then they spend more time. Right. Once they go, and I think you could do this too. So we do have um, an itinerary, it's 40 nights. It's called the Grand Danube. And wow. so it would be one week from Wilkshofen to Budapest, the itinerary you know already. Yes. And then the second week from Budapest, we are going down the lower Danube to the southern part of Hungary, to Croatia, Serbia, Romania, and Bulgaria. Wow. And this is fantastic from a historical perspective, but also so many different fruits there, vegetable, culinary delights, and believe it or not, Southern Hungary and these parts where we are going, even Romania and Bulgaria, has some very interesting wines. Yes. And we don't have wine cruises there as well. So maybe we should keep this in mind. And I, um, That is a part of the world I've never been to, and I think that's true for so many people. What I love about cruising in a river ship is that you get to see so much in so many different um, towns and, and cities but you can decide what did you like and what do you want to go back to? And I love that. But when you said Croatia, that is on my list. It's a place I've never been. And, um, but yes, that sounds like an unbelievable week or two weeks, I should say. It sounds great. Well, we will definitely discuss this, the date. And then of course, to you, our listeners, once we have decided, we will send you another message and let you know when Joanne is coming. But we have so many more questions. Wow, that is exciting. Joanne, um, back to you. Can you send us a recipe for the Danube 75, the cocktail that you showed us previously? And I know that's the cocktail that is right in front of you on your table that you will drink later. So maybe this recipe we should include in our thank you email to all of you as well. Yes, I think that's a great idea. We'll include the Danube 75, the tart, and also the ice cream so that yes. people can make all three. Yes, yes. And then one of you asked, um, what is my favorite food tour? Wow, <clears throat> that's a hard one for me because I like them all and I do like to eat. <laughs> but I did like a lot our um, food tour when we are in Lyon. Uh, Lyon, the gastronomical capital of Europe in France. Um, when we go there um, to really um, have a little food uh, tour where we prepare the food with a chef there, where we will eat together, where we will have some wine there as well. I like this one a lot and uh, also the one that we have done in Avignon, um, where we go with a French chef um, to his cooking studio and um, go first to the local supermarket where he shows us uh, how to pick actually the ingredients, the best ingredients. And this is all done. The one in Avi Avignon is done in a very small group tour. Um, while the one in Lyon um, is actually, we do it in many, many groups. So um, yeah, I, I like them all, but there are so many more. I like. Um, the goulash making, so many oh, more. I forgot about goulash. I love goulash. I'm sorry I interrupted you. I forgot to mention that was the best goulash I've ever had. It was so good. Yeah, um, yeah. And of course, again, we have eaten now so much. Uh, there was another question. If there is a charge to use our gym on board, do the classes on board and use the spinning bike. And I have good news for all of you. And that's what Ama Waterways is about. No, the gym, the classes, the spinning bike, it's all with our compliments. It's all included in the fair. And you don't even have to sign up for the classes, except you do need to sign up for the spinning bikes. Because especially in the morning, we only have four or five. Um, they are in high demand. And mm. then, of course, we have to make sure also that one is not just an hour on the spinning bike, but really that in all fairness, we are sharing here the time, yeah? So, but um, the only time when you would have to pay would be for massage or the hairdresser on board 
or the facial manicure pedicure or if you wanted to have a private fitness hour with the host the fitness our wellness host one-to-one -one, yeah that would be an additional charge a very moderate charge and our massage is about 60 or 70 euro only yeah compare this with our rates here um very very low so just to give you an idea and there are more questions um does every ship offer the complimentary happy hour and is there ice cream on every ship yes <laughs> every ship of course we offer our complimentary sip and sail hour on all our ships in europe but of course also on our ship on the mekong the amadara and we will also have this available on our brand new ship the amadalia on the nile river in egypt this ship is right now under construction and will start in september 21. the only sip and sail that is a little bit different um, is on board our Sambesi Queen in Africa. Um, because you have so many game rights, uh, you come back. But then in Africa, pretty much wine, the sparkling, the beer is included all day. Yeah. So the whole concept is a little bit different there. And if you have questions about this, please contact us, our reservations team, and we will explain you the setup for all the drinks. I would say it's the most inclusive setup uh, from our products uh, on the Sambesi Queen in Africa. So now let's see, uh, is there ice cream on every ship? Of course, <laughs> there is ice cream on every ship and um, some uh, ice creams we also make ourselves in our kitchen, our chefs, yeah. And then, no more questions i hope i covered them all so in case i forgot some i am just looking one more time that i because i really want to consider you all mm -hmm. yeah i think um it's good and now we are going to announce our winner for this evening and our winner is Debbie Robertson. Debbie, congratulations. So you scored. Um, I know there were lots of submissions for your favorite memory, um, but Debbie, you are the one. And, uh, and thank you all for submitting so many, so many wonderful memories to us. And I have to say, isn't this all about the memories and the memories are driving us forward because we know how much we have missed in all these months that we were not able to travel and um and hopefully all the ones who have not been on a river coast with us come please come because we, we only live once and life is too short to miss out on all these beautiful beautiful things but Joanne, before we say goodbye today, um, I know you um, want to announce something um, that you want to share with all our guests, because I know your most recent cookbook, The Kitchen Gypsy, is so special. I know you gave it to me, you gave it to some of the guests in the past. I have cooked so many wonderful dishes according to your recipes and you make me the hero because my family was always telling me oh mom we didn't know that you can cook so <laughs> must be must be your recipe and i believe you have this special gift for everyone that joined us today yes so we're giving the winner of the um the special memory um that they're getting the kitchen gypsy book but what I would like to offer everyone who joined us today on Sip and Sail, a special promo code, AMALOVE2020, to download complimentary copies of three seasons um, of my television show, Plates and Places. That's 39 episodes. So I would like to give that to everyone. And um, there are many 
uh, episodes which feature AMA waterways and the destinations that you visit. And AMA will also send out the information um, in the thank you email and post it on their Facebook page. So my little gift to you, um, and then the wonderful winner, I think it was Debbie, she gets Kitchen Gypsy. So That is so wonderful. Thank you so, so much for sharing this very, very special treat, Joanne. Oh, I think and I was also supposed to say that on my website, joanneweir.com, the recipes will also be there. So you will see them both places. And then again, maybe our guests who then have cooked according to one of your recipes, share one of our next sip and sale, then we maybe promote the Rhone River. And then we are talking about these, these special memories, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. So I know it was a very short hour. I see already it's five o'clock in California. It's eight o'clock in New York, in Florida. It's um, six and seven, all in between. And if you did enjoy our sip and sale hour today, come and join us for our next sip and sale, celebrating our 18th anniversary on the river on Wednesday, July 1st. So on July 1st, 2002, this was the day when Ama Waterways was incorporated and started. And we will have a wonderful, wonderful celebration together on July 1st. And with, with this, Joanne, before we need to say goodbye, and it was such a pleasure to have you here with us today. I think we should have a final toast again, right? That idea. Cheers to you. Cheers. Thank you so much for everything. Cheers. Cheers to you, Joanne, and cheers to you, our guests. And Ama Amore truly means love. And this should be our toast. The rivers continue to flow, and we are eagerly anticipating the day then we can welcome all of our guests back on board with open hearts. So cheers. Cheers. Cheers, everyone. So thank you again for joining us today. Again, I hope you enjoyed spending this hour with Joanne and with myself and with our entire Ama Waterways family. And I hope we can welcome you soon either on board Ama Magna or another one of our beautiful 25 ships that will be soon sailing again. So thanks again, cheers, and until next time. And thanks again, Joanne, until we can cruise together again. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Ama love. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>